360 editing. Hey Power Director peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from Power Director University. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on editing 360 video in Power Director 16. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are on the splash screen of Power Director 16. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's get into today's lesson, 360 Video 101. 360 Video is an interactive video that allows the viewer to switch the viewing angle during playback. 360 Video requires a special 360 Video player like YouTube, Facebook, a smartphone or a virtual reality device. In order to edit your 360 videos using PowerDirector, your 360 video must be stitched together prior to importing it into PowerDirector. PowerDirector does not have a stitching function or any type of functionality to stitch your 360 videos together. The footage I'm going to use in this video was created using a 360 Fly 4K camera, which doesn't need to be stitched in a separate program prior to importing into PowerDirector. You also want to make sure that your 360 video clips are converted to an equi rectangular mode prior to importing them into PowerDirector as well. If you don't convert your 360 videos to equi rectangular mode, You'll have issues previewing some of your angles in a 360 footage and the produced video will have the same issues. The software that came with your 360 camera should be able to convert your clips to equirectangular mode for you. I used the 360 Fly Director software to convert my footage prior to importing it into PowerDirector. There's a link to the 360 Fly 4K camera in the video description. It is an affiliate link, so if you buy the camera using my link, I will receive a small commission that will help me to continue to make videos like this for you. You pay the same exact price as if you went to the site on your own, but you'll be helping out the channel as well. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about editing and exporting your 360 videos. You can access the 360 mode in PowerDirector using the 360 editor, but you can also get to the 360 mode if you entered PowerDirector in timeline mode. So let's go ahead and do that, show you the other way that you get in here. So if you go in through timeline mode, you wanna go up here to the aspect ratio section. You wanna click on this little drop down and then you select 360. So I'm going to go to File, Open Project, I'm going to select No, I'm going to click on the project that I want to open and I'm going to click Open or you can just double click on the project, it's really up to you. I don't want to merge the project's media with this media, so I'm going to click no. So now my project is open with my 360 video clips in the library and in the timeline. Now you need to know that the following features are not available in your 360 projects in PowerDirector. As you can see, any 360 video clip that PowerDirector recognizes will have a 360 icon in the upper right corner of that video thumbnail. Right now, as you can tell in the preview, these are in equirectangular mode. And you can tell because it's kind of all spread throughout and it has these little like fisheye things going on in it. 
So it, right now it's in equal rectangular mode. And in order to view them in 360 mode, you need to select the 360 viewer under the preview window. So I'm going to click on that. Now the footage should fill up the screen better. And in the preview, you should also see navigation controls in the upper left hand corner of the preview. You can use the mouse to change the viewing angle of the video. So you can see I can just drag it around and see different stuff here. Or I can even use the navigation controls to do the same thing. So the first thing I want to do is change the starting view of the first clip on the timeline. So you see that I have my playhead at the beginning of the first clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on that clip. And then I'm going to go here to tools and 360 start view setting. So now I can select the angle that people will see first when they start watching the video. So I can use these rotation controls here to change things up if I want to and move it where I want it to be. So once I get that all set up, I can preview it by hitting play or I could just hit OK. So if I hit OK, We'll see that the playhead is at the beginning of the clip. And the preview went to the same place that I selected for the start view settings. Pretty cool. Next thing I want to do is add some transitions. So I'm going to stretch this out so we can see things a little bit clearer. So I'm going to go up here to the transition room. And I'm going to make sure it's set to all content. And here we can do transitions just like we would do any other transitions. Just drag them down and let them do what they do. So I'm just going to, let's say I'll use this, this one here. So I'm just going to grab a transition, drag it down here. And if I play this back, you'll see that the transition is also 360. Looks like the transition is coming down from the heavens. It's pretty cool. I'm going to bring my timeline back down here. And the next thing I want to do is add some color enhancement. So I'm going to click on a clip. Let's say we do this first one again. And I'm going to go to fix enhance. And I'm just going to click on color enhancement. And you see right away that the sky got a lot more vibrant and beautiful and blue. Look at that beautiful blue sky. Wonderific. But now I want to add a title. So I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to go to the title room. So I can actually add multiple titles using standard titles. Now they might end up looking a little warped. So just keep that in mind. But in order to do that, I need to turn off the 360 viewer mode. So I'm going to turn that off. And now you can see we're back in the equal rectangular mode. And I could take a standard title and drag this down to the timeline wherever I want it.
I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. And now I'm gonna left click on the title or you can double click it. And I'm gonna click on designer. And now that I'm here, I'm going to just put whatever words I want in the title. And I'm gonna place my cursor over it until I see uh, crosshairs with arrows around it and I can right click and I can select copy. And then I can paste it. And now I can kinda spread it out here. And I can make sure I got them all centered here. And I can go ahead and click OK. And now if I bring this back into 360 mode, you see I can go around here and it'll say Barber all over the place if I want to if I wanted to do that. And of course I can adjust the position, move it to a better place in the room or whatever. But just giving you the ideas here. That's what I do. I give you the ideas. All right. Now you can also add 360 titles which will not be warped, which is probably a fantastic thing. So while we're still in 360 mode, we want to go ahead and add your title to the timeline. So I'm going to grab one of these titles that says 360. Drag it down here. I'm going to click on designer. And now I can move this title wherever I need to move it. All that goodness. give it a different name, whatever I need to do. Beautiful. Now the other option that you have here is you can actually add a standard title to your timeline. So if I drag down a standard title to the timeline and I say I want to use this standard title in a 360 video, then I can convert it to a 360 title so it's not warped. So I can right click on it and then go to convert to 360 title. And now it has converted it to 360 and it will adjust itself accordingly based on a position in the 360 video. So the next thing I'd like to do is add a object to the 360 video. You can add objects, images, things like that. Let's say I go here to the uh, PIP room How about we just do this? So now if I want to, I can right click on this and select convert to 360 object. So now it's a 360 object and it will stay in space. So that's beautiful. Of course, if I want to move it around or anything, I can double click on it or I can click on designer and then I can go ahead and place it in the position that I want. I can resize it. All the same things that I can do with any other PIP object that I place in a video. So now I want to track something in the video. So what I need to do is click on the video clip. Go to tools. 
And go to motion tracker. Now I want to position this tracker over the item that I want to track. And we want to bring it in as tight as possible over that object. And now we want to click on track. And when we're done, we can click on stop. And now we want to move the playhead back to the beginning of the tracker. And then you want to select whether you want to add a image, a PIP object or a video clip to what the, you tracked. I'm going to click title. And I'll just put my son's name on there. And then you want to make sure that you move the title where you want it to be and size it right. And I'm just going to leave it right there for now. It's not a big deal. Just doing a tutorial. So one of the things that I want to do is click on adjust effect size with track object. So if there's movement, it'll like you move forward or back, then the size of the, the title will change to stay in perspective. If you want to border all that stuff, you can choose those things. I'm done. So I'm going to click on okay. And now you see this little title was added here. That's tracked over his head. If I click on play, it should stay right there over his head, no matter where I move. Alrighty then. And if his head were to move, then of course the words would move with his head as well. Now, if my video was shaky, then I'd want to stabilize it. It's really easy to do. If I click on the video that I want to stabilize, then I would go to fix enhance. And I would select video stabilizer. And then from here, you could adjust the strength. And the more you turn up the strength, the more stable the video will be. But keep in mind, if you turn up the strength, it's going to slow down your preview of your video. So just keep that in mind. I don't need to stabilize this video, so I'm going to turn it off. But if you did want to stabilize it, you could close it out here. If you were stabilizing multiple clips, you could do apply to all and then close it out. It's really up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and close out the screen here. Now, once you're done editing, adding all your stuff to your 360 video, you just go to the produce tab. If you want to send a video directly online, you can click on the online tab and you can send it to Facebook, YouTube, or Vimeo. If you want to create a file to use later on your smartphone or a VR device, then you would just click the 360 video tab. And the only option right now is H.264. And here you have the MP4 option. And then you want to go ahead and make sure you choose the correct profile for your video resolution and your frame rate or create a custom one if you need to. And it's basically it. Select the location where you're going to save your file and click on start. And that is 360 editing for ya. All right, Power Director peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of our subscribers, Tall Glamazon J Mommy. Tall Glamazon J Mommy makes mommy lifestyle and cooking tutorial videos on her YouTube channel. So if you're into that mommy lifestyle and want to learn how to cook things up, put your foot off in it, go over to her channel, 
check out a couple of her videos, and if you're feeling what she's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like Tall Glamazon J Mommy did, head over to the video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you have a tutorial that you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you click on the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.